The massive project of building the video game theme park in LEGO is continuing. This is the latest shop that I have for the theme park. It is the Balloon World and it has an illusion. If I turn it on here, you can see there's a sensor here. And that helps me carry out the illusion, which is to give people balloons. So you will see people go inside of the house without a balloon, and then they will come out again with a balloon. So let's see what's actually going on inside. I believe it's time for Monsieur Croissant to get inside. And let's remove this part of the house. Then you can see the mechanism. So first put him here, let him get registered because he has a white 2x2 plate underneath. Good, waiting for all the sensor to be cleared, but since there's no one here, it should be cleared pretty quickly. Then we speed up and inside, we have a turntable where people are getting exchanged. So we should see Monsieur Croissant without a balloon getting out. And that is the mechanism in a nutshell. Let's remove the uh, other modules here and then you can see it even more clearly. Taking out these tiles. And then I can do this. Everything is modular now. That makes it much easier for me to show you what is going on just by replacing everything. So now it's the time for the little girl. Let's see if we can find her. She has a red balloon and a red two by two plate underneath. Put her on and then see that she gets that she gets exchanged. She gets registered by the sensor outside. We're waiting for the track to clear. You can see that because it stops. And we get in. We start rotating this part while the track is running to help the rotator. Now the rotator goes a little bit more and we go out with the track. And that is the mechanism. So you see there's a rotator here in the middle. I can also help it here. I turn it, it myself. However, the, the motor is blocking it, so that won't go well. You can see there are two motor outputs on the boost top. One of them is going to this track over here. It has a gear reduction here in the side. If I remove this part, you can see it. It is running because that makes the outer track run much more smoothly when people are walking past in the front. The other motor goes to the turntable here which makes the exchange. The boost top itself has two outputs that are optional. One of them goes to the motor that goes to the outer track and the other one goes to the combined distance and light sensor where I'm really only using the light or really the color part of that in order to detect these different colors underneath. White underneath of Grish Croissant and we should see yellow underneath of the boy. The reason why I'm not using blue or green underneath of these is that sometimes gray is red as those colors, so I don't want that confusion going on. And that is really in the mechanism of this module. I've never used a boost top before, so this is really the first time doing that. Here you can see a USB cable. I'm using this because instead of using batteries, I'm just hooking up direct USB 5 volt power. And that is also why you see that it is complaining, saying there's low power. But it's always just this 5 volts and it works. So in that way, this is a perfectly fine setup. Even though you have to be a bit creative with how you're connecting the USB power in the boost top. Let's take a look at what happens with the gears when we are exchanging this little boy. So now he gets inside. You can see him coming up here in the top. And then you see the uh, center mechanism running in there, performing the exchange. And then the outer track is getting him out again. 
and that is it for the mechanism. You did see how the roof was very old looking and very damaged and that is of course on purpose because it looks like this in the video game. There's also a lot of funny angles. This angle here being used both here and there and other places in this model and that is achieved by using a pretty strange technique with one by two plates that are mounted sideways in order to give you this uh, freedom of two sections. Let me just remove the parts here. Well, that was a success. It's pretty tough. Okay, here you can see how the, this section here is angled. So you can actually move it around and put it in just the right height and at just the right angle in order to make this effect. The roof sections are built by simply not having plates properly attached to the underlying surface. And in that way you can make it look uh, damaged like this. However, in the top of the house, there's more going on than just putting the plates or the tiles on top at funny uh, angles. This here is actually not solid. This construction up here on the roof can be moved around and it can be moved around because I'm using strings. Strings with handlebars are lying across in the roof and then I'm attaching the, each element of the roof itself onto the string. And that way I can really make this effect of something that is almost falling apart, that is almost collapsing on itself and I can make these funny angles. Even a thing like the chimney up here is just sections that are turned around in order to give you that effect. Those are the details of the balloon world. It's the first time I made an illusion like that. It's the first time I made a module using the boost hub. It's going to be fun to see if that is working at all in the big layouts when I'm going out to exhibitions. And that is what I wanted to show you in this video.